It's not every day that we write off a country as a failed state. After all, even poor countries like Iraq or autocratic regimes like North Korea don't make the cut. Instead, for a country to be considered a failed state, it needs to be so chaotic that the government is no longer in control. Somalia is one of those countries. So today, we're going to be looking at why Somalia is a failed state, why it continues to be a failed state, and whether or not it can become a successful state in the future. But before we do, if you like learning about geopolitics and history, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe as it really helps the channel grow. Now, on to the video. Somalia is located on the east coast of Africa, and while it enjoyed centuries of prosperity under a series of local sultanates, its problems first began after being colonized by Britain and Italy. The British colonized the north, calling it British Somaliland, while the Italians colonized the central and south of the country, calling it Somalia Italiana, or Italian Somaliland. I know, very creative. Both European powers did little to develop these colonial outposts. After all, while the English were arguably the worst of the two, as they primarily used English Somaliland to gain troops and extract wealth, the Italians weren't much better, as they mainly used Italian Somaliland for its ports. Although Italy did create several institutions such as banks, cathedrals, military barracks, and schools. This was in order to train colonial troops and to ensure that Somalia could be used as a piece of fascist propaganda. In any case, both territories proved to be of little use to their colonial overlords, and in 1960, both became independent and joined forces as a united Somalia. However, things began to go downhill pretty quickly. You see, while about 85% of Somalia's population are ethnic Somalis, the country is divided into clans. This became a problem in 1961, as the more powerful southern clans hijacked the new constitution so that former British Somaliland would be downgraded to an autonomous province. This created a stark power imbalance between the north and south of the country. Things only got worse as time went on, as in 1969, Somalia was overthrown in a coup d'etat by a military dictator named Major General Mohamed Siad Bade. Bade was an ardent Marxist-Leninist, and under his rule, Somalia renounced the constitution, banned all political parties, and allied with Moscow. Things went well, or as well as they can go under a dictatorship, until 1977, when Bade made the decision to invade Ethiopia. The goal of the invasion was to capture the territory of Ogaden, which had a Somali-majority population. And with help from the USSR, this should have been a cakewalk. However, the only problem with Bade's plan was that Ethiopia was also an ally of the USSR. And so while the Somalis were able to take over almost all of Ogaden within the span of just six months, this all got reversed when a joint USSR and Cuban force came to Ethiopia's aid and completely crushed the Somalian army. This defeat had a devastating impact on the country. Not only did Somalia lose its greatest ally, but it also lost almost one-third of its soldiers and half of its air force, and this caused many Somalians to lose trust in Bade as a leader. At the same time, about one million refugees from Ogaden flowed into Somalia, and this led to a food and water crisis that angered many citizens as they had nothing to eat or drink. In response, Bade had no choice but to rely on foreign aid, and in order to continue his unpopular rule, he began to harshly clamp down on all opposition and only distribute aid to clans that allied with them. Eventually, Somalians had enough, and in 1991, rebel groups overthrew Bade and took over the country. In what was formerly British Somaliland, things weren't so bad. After all, they took this opportunity to declare independence and establish their own democracy. And while it has absolutely zero international recognition and doesn't exactly have a shining human rights record, it is far better off than the rest of Somalia. That's because after Bada was overthrown, the rebels didn't have anything keeping them together, and they soon split into bands where different warlords would fight one another in what was essentially a massive civil war. UN and US military intervention did little to help, and in 1994, Somalia was left to its own devices. Now in almost total anarchy, the country was declared to be a failed state, and soon it began to cause a lot of problems in the region. For one, Islamist terrorist groups began to take advantage of Somalia's lack of laws to establish bases, and today, the group Al-Shabaab is still a major political and military force in the country. Piracy is also a major problem in the region. 
You see, after the Somalian Navy disbanded, international ships began to try to fish, freely travel, and otherwise take advantage of the lack of laws. Local militia groups saw this as an opportunity, and soon a pirate economy emerged. Locals would engage in a sort of stock market, where they would invest money into the boats, guns, and personnel needed to attack ships in the nearby Gulf of Aden. And if successful, these investors would receive a cut of the profits. This caused thousands of piracy-related incidents to occur. And by the mid-2000s, the international community began to act on both the terrorism and piracy in the region. You see, in 2007, the UN Security Council authorized the creation of a unified African army to fight al-Shabaab. And in 2008, the Security Council also allowed international ships to attack pirates. This led to a dramatic drop in both terrorism and piracy. And by 2011, the capital of Mogadishu was in the hands of government forces. Things finally began to look up for the country, as in the mid-2010s, the country wrote a constitution, had two democratic elections, and began to receive a lot of foreign investment. So where do we go from here? After all, while Mogadishu may be relatively safe, most of the countryside is still controlled by al-Shabaab and other terrorist groups. And to date, few people want to visit, work in, or do business with Somalia. The country's democracy is also currently in question, as in February of 2021, the Somali president undemocratically extended his rule for two more years. To top us off, even though the country has begun a relatively strong economic program through its new national development plan, its judicial, security, and political systems are in such poor shape that the possibility of total failure is quite high. Therefore, I believe that Somalia will continue to flounder. The truth of the matter is that the Somalian government is far too weak to take back the rest of the country, and until they cut out their autocratic nonsense and clean up their human rights record, I doubt that the international community will help them much in recapturing the rest of the country. I also worry that this lack of stability will allow al-Shabaab to retake some of their lost territory, and if the capital were to fall, the need for the rest of Africa to once again fight against al-Shabaab would be absolutely devastating to the country's internal stability. To top this off, in the north of the country, Somaliland is running entirely independently from the rest of Somalia, and it is highly unlikely that they will seek a union with their problematic southern neighbor. As such, I don't think that Somalia will ever return to the level of stability that it had in 1991, and in my eyes, Somaliland will likely never become fully reintegrated with the rest of Somalia. That's all we have for you today, everyone, and thank you all for watching. If you learned anything new, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I hope that you have a great rest of your day. Until next time.